Hey, shalom, shalom, yasha Allah, peace, Israel. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha, Rakakwadash. Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Hebrew language, and Yahweh Shah being the true name of the Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus the Christ. Double honors to my apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, the men that told me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to the elect of the house of Israel that is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, which starts with 144,000. The name of this lesson is going to be, My son and daughter is in the truth. Why are they so angry? And what inspired this lesson was an older sister came to the camp that we had um, on so called Thanksgiving, right? Which is a pagan holiday. It's not a holiday that the Heavenly Father or His Son told us to celebrate. So we was out there on the streets preaching and prophesying. And this older lady, this older sister came up to the camp. And she was asking, why is her child so angry, right? Her son slash daughter or daughter, I'm not going to say for um, privacy sake, but her son or daughter is in the truth now. And they want to understand how to better deal with them and why are they so angry. And I explained to the sister, you know, first and foremost, it's just a young person thing. It's a young person thing um, to have that vigor, to be combative, you know, to have that spirit or that energy to want to take on the world, to conquer things, to challenge things. You know, it's a young person's thing. Because really, as if you ask any experienced person in the faith or mature person in the faith, yeah, they're angry, but they don't get as angry as fast as a young person would. Because we understand that everybody has their role and everybody has their lot and everybody's not meant to be believers and you can't control what the wicked does you know so when you get a better grasp of those things and those concepts you pick and choose your battles versus trying to take on the whole world so so the system basically asks you know how to better understand her child and I said, Lord, well, I'll do a lesson on it. So this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse, I mean, verse 20, chapter 20, verse 29. The glory of young men is their strength and the beauty of old men is their gray hair. In the NLT, it says the glory of the young is their strength. So that is the blessing, right, of young people is their vigor, their enthusiasm and their strength, their passion, right? And it says the gray hair of experience is the splendor of the old. So just like the vigor and the energy and enthusiasm and passion of young people is their strength and their vigor, the gray hair or the experience of age is the glory of the older man or woman, right? Because you lived a little bit longer, you've been through things a little bit longer, you experienced things a little bit longer, meaning you learn things. That means you've been tried out. Right? That means you had trials and errors and you learned. So that means you have a little bit more understanding on life versus the young person. That's why it says the gray hair of experience. And just about having gray hair, but having experience, that's what gives you more understanding about life. My son and daughter is an Israelite. Why are they so angry? So, one of the first things you learn when you come into this truth. Right, you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to learn what's in this book, right? So this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter two, verse nine. It says, "And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent onto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations, weeping." In mourning and woe right and the NLT says which he unrolled and I saw both sides were covered with funeral songs words of sorrow and pronouncements of doom so that's what's in the bible contrary to popular belief there's judgments the Lord's wrath the Lord's anger because there's a misconception what's actually in the bible right 
And when you first come into this thing, you learn that everything that you was taught in the world was a lie. Everything that you learned in schools was a lie. The American dream is really an American nightmare. Christopher Columbus discovered America, a lie. The founding fathers is what George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, is all lies. Jesus Christ was a white man, a lie. The Heavenly Father was a white man, is another lie. Adam was a white man, that's another lie. So when you first come into this thing, you learn that a lot of the things that we was taught in the world were lies. Right? Which brings me to my next scripture. This is a book of Ecclesiastes 1 verse 18. For if much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth in knowledge increaseth in sorrow. And the NLT says, the greater my wisdom, the greater my grief. To increase in knowledge only increases in sorrow. So it's the, the more you learn, the more you learn, the more you realize how much you did not know. So even that can get you upset and angry. A lot of the necessities and the basics of living, we was deprived of, whether because we, we grew up in a city or we grew up in poverty, and, and we wasn't taught in the school systems. Financial literacy, uh, you know, our true nationality, um, the names of the father and the son, our identity, our language, our customs. We didn't learn anything. We were just indoctrinated how to be uh, sheeples to the government. How to be good slaves. That's all we was taught. That's why I said the American dream is really an American nightmare. Because all you're taught in a society is how to be a good slave. And once you read this Bible, you're freed from that. You're freed from the shackles of the mental slavery that our people are still experiencing. Because that's another thing too. You're still a slave. You're still a slave. And that's what you learn that, yo, we still in slavery. We never got out of slavery. Even though the Emancipation Proclamation happened, right? With Abraham Lincoln. But we got transferred from the slave masters to the American government from one master to the another. All right? So the greater my wisdom, the greater my grief. So increasing knowledge only increases sorrow. So the more you learn, the more you realize you didn't know. And the more the realize the more you realize that you've been lied to. Even how we eat <clears throat> three meals a day. Meat eating meat all the time. You know? Eating processed foods all the time. Not eating home-cooked food. You know? Not preparing your own meals. Knowing how to grow your own food. All those things we didn't learn. And that's because of the people that's ruling the planet Earth, which is the wicked that the Bible speaks of, which is Satan the Bible speaks of. My son and daughter is an Israelite. Why are they so angry? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 20, 33. It says, I'm going to read it in the NLT. A foreign nation you have never heard about will eat the crops you work so hard to grow. You will suffer under constant oppression and harsh treatment. And that's exactly what our people are going through. Constant oppression and harsh treatment. You go to work. You're doing the work that you're not even assigned to, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. You are doing the work of a supervisor or a manager or a boss while your supervisor, manager, or boss is not even doing their own job. Right? A foreign nation. What is that foreign nation? The Caucasian race. The European race. That is that foreign nation that put us on slave, that put our ancestors on slave ships, stripped them of their identity, stripped them of their culture, stripped them of their language. And we remember these things. And this is what also makes us mad or makes us angry because we are suffering under the descendants. We are still suffering under the descendants of the slave masters that brought our ancestors to this land. In verse 34, you will go mad because of all the tragedy you see around you. This is why we're angry. 
right? Because all the tragedy that happens around us, not only in our own lives, but to our nation, our people, we see the suffering that our people are going through. And nobody's doing nothing about it. These are all the reasons why your son or daughter is angry when you first come into this truth. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart. So if you are oppressed, it's only right for you to be mad because you're not getting a fair shake at life being a black man or a black woman. The things you got to do to compete with the other races and the other cultures, the obstacles, the mazes, and the, the performance you got to do for people that's not even doing half of what you're doing, but they still excel and get the positions that you want or the positions that you bust your ass for. And they don't, gotta, they don't even have to work as hard as you do. We are the first fired and the last hired. That is oppression. Surely oppression make up a wise man mad. So these are reasons why our people, when you come into this truth, you are so angry. Now, is this truth all about anger? No, it's not. You have to be balanced. But there's a lot of things that rubs you the wrong way because... You know, you're dealing with your family and loved ones that don't believe. You're trying to get people to see what God commanded us to do, but they don't want to see it. You try to get your family members on board on what God says, but they want to go at their pace or they don't want to believe at all. So those things can get you upset as well. But you learn that this isn't for everybody. It's only for the ones that get it. And everybody else, you don't treat them like shit or you don't be nasty to them. You just, you you deal with them accordingly. They still your family members. They still your parents. They still your siblings. So you just deal with them accordingly. This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 3, verse 30. It says, Strive not with a man without cause. If he have done thee no harm. It says, Don't pick a fight without reason when no one has done you harm. So don't just be, you know, just try to come at everybody because they don't believe in the truth. Or if your parents still eat pork or they still smoke cigarettes, that's on them. They have to, they have to give account or the day of judgment like everybody else. And you did your best trying to tell them. But if they don't believe, they don't believe. It's still your parents. You have to honor your father and your mother. And your siblings are still your siblings. Your kids are still your kids. Your nephews and nieces are still your nephews and nieces. They're going to be teenagers. They're going to be young men and adults. Young men and women. You know? I'm speaking in regards of the ones that don't believe. You have to deal cordial with them. Don't pick a fight without reason when no one has done you harm. It says, don't envy, envy not thou the oppressor. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Don't envy violent people or copy their ways. For the froward is an abomination to Yahweh, but his secret is with the righteous. Such wicked people are detestable to Yahweh, but he offers his friendship to the godly. Right? So don't be a combative person. Right? Yeah, the righteous are bold as lions, but it's a place, it's a time and a place. It's a time and a place. We have to model ourselves like the Messiah. Right? And what did the Messiah say? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. This is how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. So you're wise as a snake, right? Which a snake doesn't put himself in harm's way. A snake waits for 
is prey to pass him to strike. Basically, a snake is calculative. It's, it's strategic. But though you are wise as a serpent, you are harmless as a dove. A dove is a non-violent creature. A non-combative animal. So the Lord wants us to be wise, right, as a serpent, but not dangerous like a dove. And this is the balance, right? It's not all about being angry. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, the book of Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 4, verse 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. So it says, be not as a lion in your house. You ain't supposed to be trying to force the truth upon your family members. You ain't supposed to force the truth upon your parents, your siblings, your kids. Why are you going to say your kids? Your siblings, <coughs> your parents. You can't force them in the truth. You can't force the truth on nobody, actually. You could teach your kids the truth, but that's still up to the Lord if the, if, if the Lord wants them or not. Right? You can show them how to live a righteous life. But then that's still up to the Lord if he wants them or not. So you just be an example of righteousness. You be an example of godliness. And that would inspire people to want to live godly like you're living godly. Because they see what comes with living godly. Right? But you don't try to force, yo, know, my God is going to kill you if you eat uh, bacon. God's going to kill you if you keep smoking cigarettes and smoking weed. We're not supposed to defile our temple. You're going off, man. Whether your parents are going off or not, you are, it's a time and a place. It's a time and a place. And if you're that zealous, if you're that zealous to condemn everybody around you, you forgot that you once was in their place. You once was an unbeliever. You once was in that darkness. But the Lord picked you out of that darkness. So you don't know what's in store for your family. But your job is to be a light or to the darkness, man. You're supposed to be a candlelight. You're supposed to be an example of righteousness. And if your family members don't believe or they don't want to listen, that's on them. That's their lot. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 6. Young men, likewise, exhort to be so reminded. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, sh showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. And yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and sincerity, the seriousness of your teaching. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say to you. So it says, teach the truth so that your teacher can, can't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. And that's how you're supposed to live. You don't eat pork. You don't eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. You don't smoke cigarettes. You don't smoke weed. You keep the laws. You keep the faith. You be a, a model of Yahushua or earth. And guess what? The other people around you will see how you live. And then they will have nothing bad to say about you. They can't say nothing bad about you because you're living a righteous life. And then they will feel shame and want to start to live righteous like you're living righteous if it's their lot. But if it's not their lot, you know, you know what's written of the judgment of the unbelievers. So pretty much that's it. Oh, I got one more. Because it's a balance. It's a balance. The truth ain't just about anger. Anger. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, 
It's self-control. There is no law against these things. Right? So the truth ain't just about being angry and zealous. And zealous towards anger or passion. It's also the fruits of the spirit. You gotta find a balance. But pretty much that's it. I pray and hope that you was edified. Any questions, comments, or you know, misunderstandings or understanding you need, leave it on the comment board. I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Wahara Kakwadash. So next time I say shalom.